Well, unfortunately, my luck with these inverters is not getting any better because this one has failed also. I bought it from the EB seller Domitronic, uh, and they've been very good by the way, I've been refunded and everything, so I'm going to do a little investigation for them and try and find out what went wrong. The DC fuse has not blown, so it's still getting DC power, and none of the AC fuses have blown either from what I can see, so I'll show you what happens. So I'll unplug it from the DC side. I'll just uh, plug it in again um, and show you what happens. So we get all the lights coming on. And as you can see, the 50 hertz light comes on, but it still shows um, that there's a fault, that's fault light. Now if I switch the main side off, that's strange, the 50 hertz light usually goes out. The relay sounds stuck. But that's definitely not anything to do with the relay because I have, uh, like you, you know, I've um, done continuity tests on the cable and earth neutral and live, and it all seems fine. So I just did another test there, and the relay is definitely stuck on. So I think maybe something has actually blown inside the inverter, and that has maybe damaged the relay. So, but when I plug it in, as you can see, um, let's do this just now. I could get the 50 hertz light to come on. So what I'm going to do now is just take it apart and see if there is actually anything damaged. So the seller is saying that I can repair it myself, or I could send it back to them uh, for them to do an investigation, but. I am really I'm really curious to actually see what could be wrong with it, so um I'll start by getting it opened up. So I've never actually opened this up before or messed about inside it at all, so I've still got the warranty seal on the bottom. But uh that's just the thing with these Chinese inverters, they're always failing. Um, I did see some uh, Sunny Roo inverters, which I think are German made, um, going on eBay for what? Oh, I don't even think they were even a hundred and hundred and thirty pound. I'm sure, and they'd be great. Um, I think it's a two thousand watt one, but the, the issue with them is they need very high voltages on the DC side. Um, 150 to 300 volts I think, so my solar panels don't go anywhere near that. I would have to connect all of them in series for that to work. Then obviously that would make my solar charge controller useless. So that's this taken off. Um, now this inverter is a bit different inside from my 500 watt one. It's like it's built upside down. But um, I won't bore you with that, I'll take it apart fully just now and then uh, show you all what's going on. So this inverter was bought from another one of those Chinese sellers where it, it says on the item listing that the item is in London, UK. So when they wanted me to return it, they, they provide a Chinese address. So, no I'm not returning it to China, so I just basically demanded that I get my money back. Um, because there's just no way I'm sending it back. Um, it's like I can't get the bottom off, but why can't they just be honest and tell you where the stuff is coming from? Um, it'd make it a, a lot easier for people. The bottom panel's fairly stuck anyway.
Okay, so I need a good shove to get it off, and this is what we have inside. Now, my old inverter, um, it had the uh, actual heat sinks inside, well, on both sides, and the circuit boards actually flipped the other way up. But um, this one, it's the circuit board is actually bigger. It's definitely bigger. And it's now time to do some continuity tests on the MOSFETs to see if any have failed. And the first way we can check that is on the AC side is by looking at slow blow fuse if it does have one. And I think it could be that little grey one in there. One thing I will notice that um, I can see a black mark on the side of that transformer and this, whatever it is, it's kind of wiping off onto my finger and it looks as if something's exploded against it, but Aye, here we go Let me just get my inspection up Now if we look here it's the output fuse that's went, so it's that little grey object I'm touching there, that's actually a fuse and I'll uh, come in a bit closer and show you so as you can see it's kind of like it's exploded outwards inside and it's just um, spewed whatever up against the side of that transformer so just by that I can tell that one of the AC side MOSFETs has blown um, now I can't replace it and it's probably just going to keep blowing so well what the hell we'll replace it anyway I've got um, scrap MOSFETs of the old inverter that should hopefully do it right then so I've got my continuity test set up so, that looks to me like the output H bridge there, consisting of the four MOSFETs. So we'll see which ones, if any, are blown. That one's okay. As is that one. So it seems to me like the farthest one on the left, this this one here is actually the failed one. Yeah, it's just total it's just total short circuit. I'll just solder that and replace it. And I'll either just bridge that fuse over with just a piece of wire and just use a lower value fuse in the plug. Well, that's the only thing I can do it actually because I've nothing to replace it with. These MOSFETs are 25NM60ND. Now, the ones I replaced um, in the other inverter, um, well, the ones I put in were F30NM60ND. So, I'm going to try and look up a data sheet for these just now and see if these are better or worse chances are these could be fake, you, you never know so that's the investigation on that done um, these MOSFETs are rated at a continuous drain current of 21 amps and the ones I'm going to be replacing it with um, are 25 amp rated so a little bit better but um, on my old inverter they still blue and I believe the MOSFETs are failing due to programming errors in the firmware where um, if, if the wrong MOSFETs fire at the wrong time in an H bridge they'll just short the high voltage output out um, and then destroy themselves so as I said the DC side has always been powered on 
so it must be the firmware that's at fault because as only the AC side go been switched on and off. And I would have thought they would have been able to sense the AC coming on and then adjusting to it and powering it up properly, but it doesn't seem to do that. I've no idea what microcontrollers in it. Um I could barely see um but there seems to be an ISP header there. It probably isn't an atmail, it could be uh, something else, maybe a pick. So in this particular inverter, once you've taken all the screws out on this side, you can just slide the whole thing out. And this side here will be fairly fragile um, because these MOSFETs are just supported by their uh, legs. So that, that heatsink is basically just hanging off there. And there are no components on the bottom side. I don't understand why they didn't uh, do the same just uh, have the MOSFETs touching the case on this side um, I don't really see any reason why they couldn't have done it it's totally symmetrical and the MOSFETs are the same distance away the only thing different I could see is that um, they've got shorter component legs on this side so that must be why they've never done it strange So I've got my old inverter that's uh, off to the side, I'll uh, desolder some from that. So here is the two units side by side. This is my old one here, um, and that's got a blown AC side MOSFET as well. And I'll probably just keep on blowing them to be honest. Um, I think this one is the same. This one, I'll, this is one that I'm currently the new one I'm trying to repair um, and I'll probably just do it again as well because um, I think that's the design fault with these inverters um, the firmware in them is just not comprehensive enough to deal with the functions that an inverter should have um, this one I'll give you a bit of history on it um, I got it and I had it up on solar panels quite a while ago um, just directly connected solar panels, no modifications, and um, one of the AC side MOSFETs went to so replace that, and then I think a, a DC MOSFET went, then I replaced all the DC MOSFETs with um, IRF B4110, um, which is a favourite among the electric bike people for modifying their controllers and the DC side has never failed since um, and then it, it, it failed maybe another two times after that due to AC side issues I've replaced MOSFETs on the AC side twice so I'm just going to recover everything of value off this so it'll be all the transformers and coils and all the MOSFETs um, so I've got three good AC side MOSFETs on this inverter which could be used as replacements and this should any more fail. So that's the salvaging done. Um, I've just got various MOSFETs and inductors and Schottky dials lying around here so I'll clean up the solder on them um, and then get the replacement done. Right then, so that's the busted MOSFET replaced, now to do a test. So the relay um, was stuck, so I just whacked it a few times with a screwdriver and it seems to have freed itself. Um, as soon as I hit that button, the AC side is going to be live. Um, and I'm going to try and see if it gives it any power. So I'll put a 5 amp fuse in the plug, so here goes. Um, so far I cannot see anything yeah now it's increasing so yeah the inverter is pulling power it's working again so we'll switch that off and we will put it back together right 
Right, that's it all back together now. I'll just switch it on again. Now it seems to be back to normal operation. Yeah. Getting up to about 90 watts. So it's doing not too bad. And that's it fixed. Um, until the next time that it destroys one of its MOSFETs, which will probably be soon.